Viewers across the cable access markets as well as across the World Wide Web, Facebook, and on YouTube, welcome to our continuing coverage of the 2015 Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame Hoop Hall Classic. Scott Harris here for Media One Television. I'm joined alongside Erica Hunter. She'll help me with the color and the play-by-play -play on what is going to be the premier contest for Game 2 where the Terriers from West Springfield High School face the Golden Eagles, the Lady Golden Eagles from Central High School. Now the significance of this contest currently, you are probably on the day these two teams play, looking at the top two girls basketball teams in Western Massachusetts. Now let's talk a little bit real quick about the West Springfield Terriers. They have already beaten the runner-up to last year's state champions, the Longmeadow Lancers. They met them once in the Connecticut River Classic on the 29th of December. Met them again on West Springfield's home court just a couple weeks ago from the day of this broadcast, where once again, after trailing the long medal late in the third quarter, they went on a run in the fourth that would make them victorious. So you are once again looking at the number one and the number two teams in Western Massachusetts high school girls basketball. Want to take this opportunity? to introduce you to my co-host. I kind of like to call this Take Your Daughter to Work Day, but as you get more into what this game has to bring, you'll understand her and my relationship, her with a bit of a basketball history. Erica Hunter, how are you? I am good. I am pretty excited for the game tonight. No, I think that, uh, not to date you, but it's been a little while since your high school days, so you're going to get a chance to maybe look back, reflect, maybe have some heartache of days gone by, because I know what it's like when you're just like consistently on the court since you were a kid as you were. But then you kind of get to that point and you got to kind of move further into adulthood. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm an adult now, but I definitely want to be out there. I hear you. So <laughs> we'll enjoy her insights as the game goes on because, again, she is been in this position on both the intermediate level, the scholastic level, the collegiate level, and um, you know she understands what it's like to be in these pressure situations, having played uh, again in high school and college where teams have gone to the playoffs and had chances for championships in their division. We are going to defer to the public address announcer as we watch the introduction of the two teams, and then we are going to get right to the tip-off. Once again, you're watching Media One Sports Television coverage of the 2015 Basketball Hall of Fame Hoop Hall Classic. They're going to go right to the jump ball. The national anthem was played with the opening game today as part of the opening ceremonies. And from that, I want to thank our military support, the United States Marine Corps. They are co-sponsoring this event for day two. And we want to thank them for coming out here and getting involved and supporting the kids and honoring the sport of basketball in its birthplace, the 2015 Hoopal Classic. So, Erica, you've had a chance to size these teams up a little bit. You've looked at the roster. I think maybe a little more size if i may say weight wise kind of leaning toward west springfield but i think the height advantage going to the lady golden eagles yeah it looks like unfortunately we don't have the the heights here for the west springfield team but they're they're a little bigger than the uh central high school team early on look at this kk barba down low and she gets it to rachel belvo and there's the touch off the glass so the lady terriers first on the board
trying to size up the defense early on. It looks like West Springfield is leaning towards kind of a half zone, half man. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell so far, you know. There, there are a lot of turnovers. It's going to take them a little while to get their footing, the stage or the court, as we call it. But we're, we're playing on a bigger stage. This is where I use the phrase court here a little bit bigger. And in the confines of the high school, when you've got the enclosed walls and the bleachers are a little closer, I think some of what you see early on is just adjusting to the size of the arena. Erica, you can talk about watching your game progress from the smaller gyms to the larger venues. How much of a factor is that? You know, in high school, it was a huge factor. Um, we played at the UMass basketball courts for the tournament, and there was a big difference in, in running and your lungs. Um, but in college, not so much because you're used to playing on the bigger court. Now, if we look at the matchup scenario so far here, we've talked about the size. Let's talk about the speed. Maybe quickness will be the benefit or the disadvantage, depending on which way you look. Yeah, I imagine because the West Springfield team is a little bigger um, weight-wise, I, I, I imagine that the Central team is going to be a little faster. Now, at the end of the day, when you talk about that speed, if Central has the stamina to maintain this pace, then they may have the advantage. But you have to think that there's those games where, you know, you start off, you're moving fast, and you got to kind of stop and catch your breath. So maybe West Springfield has to know when Central's in a bit of a lull. Four two early on in this game. Six minutes and 18 seconds left in the first quarter. And that shot right there is going to allow Central to close the gap to one. It's 4-3 in favor of West Springfield. In the event that you find the scoreboard appearing on your TV screen, Central appears as the visiting team on the scoreboard, and we're all tied at four. <laughs> Rachel Bilovo, the ball, I think, literally made a dead stop. Reminds me of that Nike shot from Tiger Woods playing golf where the ball just hung on the end of the cup. I think that ball was in a dead stall before it finally fell in for the field goal for West Springfield, although Central off that field goal has the lead 7-6. It looks like Central is putting a little bit of pressure on West Springfield right now. Oh, West Springfield definitely a little bit of a press early. A little tighter than the press we're seeing from West Springfield. Now, what do you think of the call? Calls on number 23, so it was a blocking foul. And um, Alea Sweeney, she didn't agree with that call. <laughs> Katie Lipscomb on the line for the Lady Terriers. So far, it doesn't look like those Lady Terriers are having much trouble getting through that press. Well, there is one thing when you mention that, because if you're pressing too hard, you have to be able to hustle if the ball gets advanced quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. Central, while pressing, once West Springfield gets by, they're not winning the catch-up game. Two for two for Katie Lipscomb. Outside, fake travel, Tamar Gervais, we're going the other way. Massive substitutions for Central, if I can catch them all. Karina Miranda, I think I saw Aisha Figueroa step up, and possibly number 33, Shariah Haynes, now into the game for the Lady Golden Eagles. KK Barber going to the line. And now you're going to watch this. Having seen West Springfield play once, you've seen the coverage already here on Media One Television through our YouTube and our Facebook links. KK Barba is essential to this team when it comes to hustle. She is, she sacrifices herself to make plays on the floor to get balls, making saves out of bounds. Watch KK Barba as she develops throughout this contest. He makes them both. It looks like Elias Sweeney was taken out of the game. Uh, she has two fouls. Not too far into the game so far. That's, that's no good. 
That ball rattles in and out. Offensive board back to central. The fight on the floor. It's won by the Lady Terriers. And here they come. Beliveau with an open look. Unlucky. The rebound. KK Barba. Nikki Longy. And here come the Golden Eagles. Five minutes left in the first quarter. Number two, Aishana Brown. She gets the rattle, the bounce, the roll. The difference is one. West Springfield up 10 to 9. So, Erica, as you watch this game unfold, share with me a little bit about in those times when you were actually on a slower team and you had to deal with the kind of speed that you might be seeing out of Central right now. Um, you know, we, I think we did have some speed. Oh, a little, I mean, I'm not saying, yeah, I, there had I to was, be times. I was definitely one of the slower players. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't calling you out, but there have to be those moments where you, by chance, had some teams that were a little quicker. And then how do you, how do you, what do you do with that defensively? I mean, of course, you've got to get back, but does a zone work better with a fast team or if the matchups are even? I'm feeling like you're giving me the 50-50 ball. Is, is that no response your way of saying it can go either way? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really depends on, on the team and, and what they have to bring to the table. Nikki Longy gets the rattle in the basket. Substitutions. Why don't we start first with West Springfield? That would be uh, Finesse Young Baldwin and number 14, Tori Weathers, into the contest. Nikki Longy, one for two. Again, you got to want the ball. You got to want the ball. You can't sit there and watch the loose ball and figure out who's going to grab it. I'd rather see two teammates go up for it than see three teammates standing there just looking. Nikki Longy gets down low, off the glass, count the basket, Rudy Spano. That was a nice pass. She definitely had part awareness on that one. She knew right where, where her uh, teammate was on that. Three-point attempt, and it's good. That is Aisha Figueroa. Ooh, around and out. Unlucky Rudy Spano. Oh, almost a touch foul, but she pulled back. Traveling. Central with a one-point lead, 14-13, and they sub Tamar Gervais into the game for the Golden Eagles. I have to say, so far, this is a pretty fast-paced game. Uh, I, I imagine they're going to get tired pretty soon, both teams. But they're not using any of that 30-second clock. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a good point there. On average, they come down and attempt their first field goal within 10 seconds of getting down the court. Really? Very wow. good observation. Katie Lipscomb on the line. Sherea Haynes called the central foul, her first. All tied at 14, five team fouls against the Golden Eagles, two team fouls against the Lady Terriers. Free throws, key. Games can be won or lost on making or missing the free throws. So far, I've been pretty impressed with the free throw shooting. Um, it's always something you practice every day, but when it comes down to it, it's it's hard to make it when it when it's game time. But these girls are doing a pretty good job. I think that we've learned, and you know, I've already used the phrase "take your daughter to work day." But if there was one thing that Erica was good at, and I commend you. I don't want to say I taught her everything she knows, but her free throw shooting was very good. Um, for what we call a tall girl in the basketball world, she was considered a pure shooter by her peers. And, and the success of you in your day, it showed for the fact that you did focus on that fundamental. Want to call the central substitution real quick. Aishana Brown returning to the lineup for the Lady Golden Eagles. I have to say, I did have a beautiful shot. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> you really, really did. <laughs> 
And unfortunately, it wasn't until college when I really uh, focused on my three-point shot. I, I think I could have done some and I have crazy to admit, things in high school if I had worked on that earlier. Well, when it came to your three points as your collegiate days developed, admittedly defenses really weren't expecting you to trail down the court. They figured you were just the taller center forward who was kind of lagging back. It took them a while to realize that you were a pure shooter, and they had to key in on you when you pulled up to the three-point line. Finesse Young Baldwin at the line for the Lady Terrier. She'll miss the first. Central up 16-15, 229 in the first quarter. She'll hit the second. Substitution for Central, Sharon Robinson into the lineup. For those of you just joining us, you're watching Media One Sports Television coverage of the 2014 Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame Hoop Hall Classic. All the premier high schools in the region invited to this tournament. And in the latter days, you will also see some of the top high schoolers in the country, top college prospects. And as the history of this tournament has shown since 2006, you'll also find some future NBA stars who have and will continue to pass through these domains, if I may, of Blake Arena before moving on to bigger and better things. Free throw off the mark, substitutions by the lot for West Springfield. Number four, Rachel Billiveau. Number five, KK Barba. Number 11, I believe, I also saw a check in, Annie Greeny, but I'll check that. Yes, that was the other sub, Annie Greeny, number 11. Central off the rebound. Three-point basket, and it's good. Tamar Gervais. West Springfield got up the court faster than the camera operator, but they're back. <laughs> Rattles it home. Number 24, Michaela Thompson. Billavo drives. And she's going to the line. Substitutions, number four for Central, Karina Miranda, and number 22 into the game, Alea Sweeney. Villavo, we're all tied inside the final minute of the first quarter. KK Barba to Villavo. She's going to say that, that looked like a travel. <laughs> <laughs> And it was. I didn't think that they were going to call it for a second there. Fifteen second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. So West Springfield has the opportunity for the last shot of the first quarter. Rudy Spano chasing down that rebound. Sweeney, Barba. Check that, Greeny to Barba, back to Greeny, inside to Barba. Jump ball. Seventeen point eight, last shot could be. Centrals tied at twenty one. Three point basket. I missed the number. I that was number 12. We'll check it. It was number 12. I see it flashing on the master scoreboard for her sixth point of the game. I would trust they both came on three point baskets. So we credit Aisha Figueroa. And that's the end of the first eight minutes. Let's take a look inside the central huddle, where if the opening introduction said anything, when you talk about former Western Mass standouts, and I had the pleasure of having her on one of my past sponsored teams in the Greater Springfield Pro-Am, Jasmine Lovejoy, now on the assistant coaching ranks for Central High School. Oh, yeah, I remember her. Yeah, she has <laughs> to be quite the influence to this team. And, you know, sometimes you can sit there when you're coaching a team and just tell them what you want, but she has instant credibility. So I'm sure when she says, do as I say, period, <laughs> I don't think they argue with her too much when you look at her background. 
Let's take a look in the other side of the gym and we peek inside the West Springfield Lady Terriers huddle. And again, quite the crew here. Off to a fantastic season. As I had mentioned early on in the pregame, already having twice dethroned last year's runner-up to the Division II state championships. The West Springfield Lady Terriers, they are a team to watch. But at the same time, taking nothing from Central, who so far in this early season have only lost one game, none in conference. So we're eight minutes in, 24-21 Central. Erica, you say you wish you were out there, huh? Oh, yeah, especially now seeing how the game's going. It's a, it's a really good matchup, and I've been really impressed so far. I uh, would love to do a little baby hook right now. <laughs> that was one yeah. of my favorites. Yeah, you know, everybody has their signature move. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know, what were you more proud of, your three-point prowess or the baby hook shot? I think in high school it was the baby hook shot. Or maybe the up and under. That was always a, a good one, too. Mm -hmm. um, in college, I, I loved my three-point shot because I, I was just learning how great I was at it. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but I'm going to toot my own horn. West Springfield gets the first ball to start the second quarter and gets the first offensive rebound. K.K. Barber, the turnaround. Central rushing back up in the other direction. What was the call? I'm sorry, I looked across at the ref. I missed his hand signal. Obviously, it wasn't a foul, but it didn't it look like travel. she traveled. Yeah, I don't I think, see how. I think that's what he called. That's interesting. <clears throat> I mean, unless when she picked up the dribble, she took too many steps before getting in the air. But at least it looked like, you know, the run up the court, textbook. Okay, so Erica, I expect a two-word answer to this trivia question. As these girls run up and down the floor, I hear knees squeaking and banging on the floor. What's the answer? Knee pads. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Just wanted to tell everyone in the world that I was forced to wear knee pads. And? And it protected my knees. There you go. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I see these girls walking around all banged and bruised. And there's moments when there's on a loose ball on the floor. And I know some of the taller girls hesitate for going down because the first thing you do is you hit your knees before you get to the ball. Right. And, and, and you don't like that. Tell me you weren't a little more aggressive chasing loose 50-50 balls once you had that extra padding coming down from your six foot three frame. You know, I was. I, I wasn't afraid to fall with those. Um, you know, it's just one less bell to answer by taking care of that. So, <laughs> you know, I realize I wasn't your fan favorite as I just continued to emphasize that if you wanted to play, that was going to happen. But I just couldn't look at those banged up knees anymore. They were scary. <laughs> Love you, but they were scary. <laughs> I know. I bruise easily, too. So it's not a good combination. Tomar Gervais hits the basket. The lead for Central is five with 647 left in the second quarter. You know, they're, they're, oh, go ahead, you were going to say? I was going to say, that was a bank shot, and I am not a fan of bank shots. I just, I just can't give anyone credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, are you saying because you think it's the, the end result of a bad shot, or you don't think people yeah. can intentionally do that? I mean, what? I mean, if it's at, a, if it's at an angle, then I, I would use the bank shot, but if you're, you know, at the foul line, there's no excuse. <laughs> Number 23, <laughs> Aaliyah Sweeney. Uh, I did bring you in for the personal insight, and I guess I'm getting my money's worth. I'm sorry. That was no, funny. no. I mean, again, you're, you are easily inclined to your opinion. I welcome your insights. And talking about insights or in the net, number 24, Michaela Thompson, the hoop, the harm. She's going to the line to complete the three-point play.
off the free throws. I'll tell you what, rebounding, both of these teams could do a little better on the box out. Halftime, I'll run down for the stat sheet just to see what some of the totals are for the offensive or the rebounds in total. The, uh, the rolling stat sheet, and I want to thank the personnel. I should give credit. While they host this at Springfield College, which is the birthplace of basketball, so ideal that they have this venue to make this event happen, but the support staff here at Springfield College really gives this whole environment that pro feel. So I appreciate that at the half, I'll be able to walk down to the scorer's table, get a copy from the stat sheet. So uh, we'll take a little bit of time during the half to give you the, the tail of the tape. I haven't called the score in a while. It's 20, it's 33-25 Central. Forgive me if you're not keeping the score at home. It kind of got away from me. I didn't realize that Central had stretched out the lead to eight. The attempt to add three, no good for Karina Miranda. Number 23, off the glass and rattles out. Offensive rebound, Central. Head fake outside to the right wing. Ashana Brown goes in close to number 23, Alea Sweeney. And here come the Lady Terriers. 4.47 left now in the first. In the second, pardon me. In the first half is what I meant to add. Central rebound, stop, pop, glass, drop. Tamar Gervais, timeout, West Springfield. Let's take a look inside. So we talked about the tempo, Erica, and that at some point they were gonna have to slow it back. We could be at that point right now. Yeah, I mean, it looks like West Springfield has been slowing down a little bit, and that's given Central the opportunity to score some points. Uh, I think they're getting a little tired, but Central keeps up the pressure. And, that, and at the end of the day, I question that if West, uh, I'm sorry, if Central comes out this, this hard and fast to open the first half, you get a 10-minute break for uh, halftime. If they can come out to start the second as well as they started the first, and they go to this break with a 10-point lead, watch out. 4.33 in the first half. <laughs> Westside's finesse young Baldwin showing she's got some dribble skills. But eventually I think she got her head down and Central got the, at least broke up the play. But she makes up for it. She gets the ball there, and she scores. Finesse Young Baldwin. And there, I think she was in on breaking up that play. Open look for the three. Number 23, the offensive rebound. And Alea Sweeney going to the line. Annie Greeny picks up the personal. Eight points, the difference, 35-27 Central. Chance to bring the lead to 10. K.K. Barba returning to the lineup. In for Rachel Bilivo. One for two, 36-27 on the floor. And the possession arrow is going to keep it with Central. Two ticks off the shot clock. Time for a Central substitution. Sharaya Haynes returns. Alea Sweeney, she'll get a break. Nice drive by number two, Finnis Young Baldwin. She'll go to the line. She came in off the bench, and she has definitely given a spark to the Terriers' offense. 
36-27 Central. That foul called on Sherea Haynes of Central. That is her third personal. Only player on the court with three, at least for Central. No current players on the floor for Westside seeming to have problems in the foul department. So, do you question why there wasn't a call there? Maybe because the player was going for the ball, but it looks like her arm just kind of took the West Side player down as she was trying to swing for the rebound. Yeah, I think that was just aggression there. KK Barba unable to connect to Rudy Spano. Little back pass. Ooh, I'll tell you what, that would have been something if you just took that little move and then brought the three-point field goal in behind it. Three minutes left in the first half. You know, nice hustle back by young Baldwin. She was able to stop the first Golden Eagle from scoring but she had a trailer. A long two for Nikki Longy. Karina Miranda subbing in for Central. And Rachel Bilovo returns for the Terriers. Central still putting pressure on. Well, you know, if there's one thing about this game for Central, because of where they are in the division, they have some tougher opponents down the road. So for things that they may still encounter in their season and through the playoffs, I don't see where they wouldn't use every game as a test for things to come. So if they run hard the whole 32 minutes, yeah, I can see why. That's very true. 141 left in the first half. A long two, short. <laughs> Three point basket. Nice job by KK Barber there. That was a that was a long three. She came back to try to help in transition. The inbound pass was broken up by Westside, but then they lost it out of bounds. A fresh 30 seconds with 116 left in the first half for Central. Long pass over midcourt. Did not work out for them. Public address announcer calling for the final 60 seconds of the first half, 41-33 Central. K.K. Barba, the runner by Weathers, off the glass, unlucky. Little sloppy bringing that ball up, although there were a couple of Terriers trying to pick her pocket the whole way. Thirty-six point seven. Depending on how fast West Side scores, Central will get last touch of the ball with about six seconds to go. Of course, unless. <laughs> Driving no problem. I shot a Brown. Eight seconds, glass, double rattle, jump ball. 
traveling with 2.0 seconds under their own basket. Actually, aside from coaching the youngsters, Erica, I don't know if I should have you draw up. What's, what's your call on this two-pointer? I mean, with two seconds left, what do you do? When you look at the matchup on the field, what do you think KK is going to do with this ball? I think it's going to go into number 32. Um, she definitely has the height advantage right now. If she can get open. If she can get open. And 1. she has a decent 5. shot. I mean, I was, I was kind of ranking on her a little bit for that bank earlier, but uh, she's proven herself to be a shooter. Nikki Longy out of the doghouse. <laughs> Long pass out of bounds. Central now 1.2 ticks to go the length of the court. Well, that was a fast 1.2 seconds. But at the end of the day, that's the end of the first half. After 16 minutes complete, the Central High School Golden Eagles take a 10-point lead into the break, 43-33 over West Springfield. We'll be right back with the second half action. This is Media One Sports Television coverage of the 2015 Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame Hoop Hall Classic from Blake Arena on the campus of Springfield College. We'll be right back. Through the speed edit, right back at you. Second half action. And it would be, you know, it doesn't matter what it would be. Let's just see what it is. As the teammates rush in to help Katie Lipscomb up off the floor. Teams traveling in different directions for the second half. Nikki Longy gets the field goal there. Each team will shoot in front of their home bench for the second half of the game. High off the glass to Never Neverland. Almost looked like a drawn up play as Alea Sweeney got the put back in the basket for Central. Arching three point attempt, no good. I definitely think the offensive rebounding favors the Central Lady Golden Eagles. I would agree with you on that one. I think they're a little bit more aggressive when it comes to that. They get themselves in good position on the box out. And the fundamentals are paying off because the offensive boards are falling in their favor. But they're not free. They're working for them. And the work's paying off. Second half action, Media One Sports Television coverage of the 2015 Hoop Hall Classic here on the campus of Springfield College. Put on by the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. They've been doing it for about 10 years now. And the success of players who have climbed through the ranks of playing here for their high school games, moving on to college and then the pro level, easily 40 or more over time. Central now, driving. Opening the second half on fresh legs just as they open the game. Number 24, Michaela Thompson. Long three-pointer, no good. Fast pass. Little too fast. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with the crowd here. It's a college gym, but they filled it up pretty good. Oh, well, you just wait until the heavy hitters roll in. Although I have to tell you, I'm surprised. Last night's key matchup, well, maybe I'm not. Central and Putnam, both Springfield Public High Schools, probably the largest schools in the Springfield system. They had their game here to close things out last night, and it was standing room only. Wow. 
We had a couple seasons of that at my gym, uh, at Hopkins Academy, when I played there. And uh, it always pumps you up so much. You know, it's interesting, as you mentioned, what it was like the days of your high school ball and that gym being full. Uh, that little town in Hampshire County has always had a way of coming out to support its local athletes because I saw parents in that gym that you would think had no idea about basketball. They just came out because it was a good uh, community support effort, and, and you got to love that. you got to love that. Yeah, it was great for the players. You know, the energy was just tangible. It was great. I remember I came out in support of the Hopkins Hawks, and I had that nice blue and yellow H painted on my face. <laughs> People looked at me kind of funny, but hey, I wasn't there to make friends. Nice hoop by number five, K.K. Barba. K.K. Barba, like her style, like her game. Nice West Springfield takes a timeout early and understandably as the lead has climbed to 18, 55, 37 with 437 left in the third. So yes, community support is a nice part of high school athletics. And in the smaller towns and communities, I think it means more than in the big cities where you have more of a pool of people to come out and watch what's going on. So those were some good times. And the D3 system that you played in gave you the opportunity to get some varsity touches when you were still, what, a young in the eighth grade? Or in fact, I think Hopkins may have been seven through 12. They may have given you a couple ups from JV to get some runs. Yeah, I mean, I, I had my first, first varsity points as a seventh grader. That was a pretty cool experience for a little middle schooler to be up playing with the varsity team. Yes, I would definitely think, and it happens here on the high school level where you'll have some JV kids who get to play up for some varsity games and when you can get that experience early. But I think they had sights on you considering you were well into the six foot range as a freshman in high school. So if they had a chance while you were still in what would be considered junior high school to get you some early experience, yeah, they were no fools. That and I had you, Scott Harris, teaching me how to shoot. <laughs> well, I re listen, if there's, I, want to, I want to tell this story because here was the first thing where Erica came to me, and she was already doing very, very well as a basketball player. Um, her two older brothers gave her someone to spar with, her younger brother as well. You know, they all got out there in the front yard. You know, I mean, <laughs> the classic line, if you pay for the blacktop, you can make the rules. But knowing what I had in the kids under my roof, no, I gave them the tools so they always had some place to play. But Erica said to me one day, okay, why do they keep, stripping my shot. Sometimes she would go up, she'd get stripped from behind. What was the answer for that? What was the difference between not getting stripped and you becoming a pure shooter? Um, I think it was where I held the ball, you know. Exactly. I, I initially held it kind of low. Uh, I had to bring it up to my chin. Then the flip side is if she was holding it too far above her head. I said if you look up with your eyes and you can't see the ball, you've got it too high up or too far back. And that was the difference between realizing that when you shoot the ball, you want to at least see it in your hands the whole time, and that's how you get the line between there and the basket. From there, it was just knowing that one hand balances and one hand between the wrist, the elbow, and for the longer shots, learning how to use your legs, you want to be able to get that leg strength. We talk about how some shooters have problems in the game because when you start losing leg strength, you're weaker getting the ball up, and that also affects your game. In there fighting for the offensive rebound in the putback, Nikki Longy, she had two chances to make it happen. I give her credit for her strong effort down low. Long outside basket right there by Alea Sweeney off the mark, and here comes KK Barba. Nikki Longy, the turnaround from the free throw line, nothing but net. Yeah, see, she's got it going on. I'm seeing some images of Nikki Longy in you, Erica <laughs> Hunter. Yeah, she's a big girl, and I have to say they're utilizing her. Uh, they, this West Springfield team seems a little more diverse when it comes to the, their ability to use the inside-outside game. Yeah, and I think that's in part because Springfield Central is just so used to the run game. And oh, yeah. when you're using the run game, unless you know you have trailers, it's not inside-outside. You either run up fast and kick it to the trailer, or you just run in, penetrate, and, and hope for what you get. Yeah, and Central has 
a great ability to dribble too, so they can always take it inside off the dribble. Second game of five for the Hoop Hall Classic, Blake Arena, Springfield College. And this is definitely tonight's premier matchup. As I had mentioned early on in the game, West Springfield and Springfield Central, the two stronger schools right now in the region. Fifty five thirty nine. So West Side has closed that gap a little bit. They've trailed by as many as 19, and that's when they called their first timeout in the third quarter. Coming out of this timeout, we'll see what the coach has drawn up. Katie Lipscomb had to aggressively fight through the defense to find KK Barba for the basket. Okay, I think I can say this without anyone out there in TV land misunderstanding my point. I love KK Barba's style. <laughs> I love it. Just, just love it. Love what she brings to the game for her team. And here from the outside, ooh, I would have loved to see her drain that. Talk about the momentum shift. That would have been nice. Three minutes left in the third. Barba to Longy. Longy looking down low. Rudy Spano, and she's going to the line. Tori yep. Weathers coming to the table to check in for West Side. When you're talking earlier about free throw shots and how they can make or break a game, this is important right now for West Springfield to make these. That's the fourth personal foul against Shariah Haynes. She'll take a seat. Oh. Ishana Brown will sub in for her. Feeling the pain, Shariah. Feeling the pain. Oh, when you want to play the whole game and you're on the bench early, huh? That's the worst. One for two for Spano. Oh, nice block there by Villavo, intercepting that pass. Back into the hands of Central. Weather's got a tip on that. Westside a little scrambling right now. And I'm sorry, that was not Barber, that was Villavo. Villavo in the game. Barber's on the bench for the moment. Momentum shift right now. End of the third quarter. If Westside can continue to play with this kind of pace to wrap up the third, they could go into the last eight minutes looking really good. And that basket's good. Hoop in the harm. Tell me that's not a momentum builder. Yeah, that was great by uh, number three, Katie Lipscomb. She is fast. Now, we talked about how they've already dropped Long Meadow two times in this season. When they got that second game, they were hosting Long Meadow at Westside, and they were trailing. But I think, if I, as I saw the box score, they may have beaten Long Meadow 22 to 7 in the fourth quarter to win that game. I see them having this kind of a late game surge going on right now. You know, you can't put it past West Springfield. They do have a history of good fourth quarter finishes. 57-44 Central, 227 in a third. Count it. The difference is 12, down from 19. West side's got to be feeling pretty good right now, and maybe Central a little worried. <laughs> Ishana Brown from downtown. Nikki Long away with, with the, uh, or sorry, Longy, with the fadeaway basket. No, you know, she's, she's, she's pretty coordinated. And when I say that, and, and again, I, I think here's where I defer to your expertise on this because being a tall girl, you have to kind of grow into your talent as you grow into your body. And sometimes they don't all happen at the same time. But right now, Nikki Longy, she does seem pretty comfortable between her inside game, her outside game. She has good court vision. She's good at turning and knowing where her opponents are. And uh, I'm trying to see here. Help me, please, from the stat sheet. What year is Nikki Longy? She's a senior. Oh, they're going to miss her next year. They're going to miss her next year. 
Besides playing some really good defense right now, I think it's helping them and it's what's making the change in the game, change of the pace of the game right now. And it uh, looks like Central just called a timeout, probably because of that. 15, the difference, 149 left in the third, 60-45 Central. So it's nice that you can actually relate to the different aspects of the game when you actually made that point about what it's like going to the bench midway through the third with four fouls, understanding that the coach may not put you out until there's like minutes left in the fourth quarter. And if you're not needed at all, you know, it, it, you're just not able to pad your stat sheets because you're riding time with four fouls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I noticed it when she got her third foul too, that she was making her way straight to the bench. And uh, it's always tough because you have to play the game differently after you get into foul trouble. You can't be as aggressive. You have to be really careful about what you do. Central girls last to break the huddle. And they've got the ball going the length of the floor. Foul on the floor, no call for the carry. Finesse Young Baldwin. 137 on the clock. Made basket. Alea Sweeney, the field goal. Oh, the frustration on the face of young Baldwin. Rudy Spano stepping up to the scorer's table. And Finesse. Looks like Finesse was frustrated and that's why she fouled. That's, that's never a good sign. Heard the slap up coach. here. Got to have control, got to stay in control. Got to use that frustration to motivate you. Oh, there's a key quote, huh? That's that yeah. blackboard, that's blackboard talk right <laughs> there. <laughs> I had an issue with that myself. Alea Sweeney. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think I, I learned that until uh, after I stopped playing ball. Oh, now see, that's interesting. Your candor is much appreciated. <laughs> Erica Hunter and Scott Harris from Media One Sports Television on the campus of Springfield College for the 2015 Spalding Hoop Hall Classic. 49.4 seconds now left in the third. Central edges back their lead to 17. Spano to inbound. Lipscomb, Young Baldwin, Spano. Rebound, central. Ooh, aggressive. Oh! Oh, Katie Lipscomb, I swear, looked like she just had all ball and just muscled the stop, but she gets called for the foul. Now, her frustration I just felt. <laughs> <laughs> Number 23, Alea Sweeney will be taking two shots. Oh, 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 that's painful. Looks so clean. Substitution into the game. Annie Greeny returns for the Terriers. Oh for two. Spano, tightrope walking. Mm. Couldn't get control, couldn't get the brakes, and then couldn't get the bounce off the central player. Central's going to take a quick timeout. So at this point, and you've been here before, 
you've got a comfortable lead, but you're having a problem maintaining it. What's the coach telling the girls right now? You know, with my team, I think I would have wanted them to slow the ball down a bit. Um, but that's just not the pace that this central team goes at. So I'm not sure, you know, what, what he's telling them right now. Now let's play it in the other direction. Cent I'm sorry, West Side. And you see what West Side is battling against against Central. What do you think he's telling the girls as they trail and time is not on their side? I would have them, you know, not stress about the time right now because it's only an 18 point game. I mean, anything can happen still. <clears throat> um, but I would say keep nailing it inside because that's what's worked for them so far. You know, when you talk about nailing it inside, if you can isolate on a Springfield Central player who might be in the potential for foul trouble, then that's who you want to take it to. Try to make them vulnerable. Try to take them off their game, slow them down, make them play a little more timid. Although, you know, when I say all that about Central, their bench is so deep, I don't know if it matters. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's always someone to fill to fill the groove if somebody else kind of kind of jumps the track. And at the end of the day, that's always been the history of Central. They're, they're deep. West side with another chance. 63 45, but that lead is back up to 18. 19 has been the largest central lead of the game, if I am recalling correctly. Oh, nice touch by Young Baldwin to get that pass. Stops, pops. Ooh, so close. Nikki Longy in for the fight. She'll keep the ball because I believe there was a push foul called on number 23. Yes. Alea Sweeney picks up her fourth. Fifth team foul in the second half. I see Tamar Gervais stepping up to the scorer's table to sub in. And Nikki Longy gets the hoop in the harm. She's going to the line. I know you want her autograph. <laughs> I, I know you've changed your whole concept on Nikki Longy. You want that post game picture in her autograph, Erica. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Katie Limscombe in the game, and young Baldwin will take a seat. Sixty-three forty-seven, make it sixty-three forty-eight. Ten point five seconds. What Central going to do with the one last opportunity? Coast to coast, off rebound offensively. Time out of third quarter complete. After 24 minutes of play, the Springfield Central Lady Golden Eagles 63, the West Springfield Lady Terriers 48. We'll be right back. You're watching Media One Sports Television coverage of the 2015 Spalding Hoop Hall Classic brought on by the Basketball Hall of Fame Springfield in the sports birthplace. And we get back to the final eight minutes of action. Now it's worth repeating, the double victories of West Springfield over Long Meadow came with a big fourth quarter. If they could have a big fourth quarter here, they can turn this game around. Nice swing of the ball. Oh, look at that shot, Nikki Longy. just to hook up that shot. Blocking foul. No, wait. Okay, just checking. Aisha Figueroa picks up her first personal. And Katie Lipscomb gets to shoot two. One and one, one and one. <laughs> Seventh team foul against Central in the second half. Katie gets the one and one. Oh, 
Nikki Longy, oh, baby, grab it. Mm. One of the advantages that uh, West Springfield has right now is that Central is getting into foul trouble. So they have almost this whole quarter to be going to the line. If they can draw those fouls. Good observation. Rudy Spano picking up her first foul of the game. Fourth Terriers foul in the second half. That's Michaela Thompson on the line. She hits the first. 64-50, 7.25 left in regulation. Rattles off. Another rebound. <laughs> it's my girl Longy. Nikki Longy. Always rooting for the big girls. Yeah, you know, that's right. Not just because I raised one, but I just think that sometimes they're the underdogs or the most misunderstood. They don't get all the credit that's due. You know, they're, they're not appreciated enough when they do well. They're come down too hard on when they're not. Gotta love the tall girls. <laughs> Substitution into the game for Westside. Number 23, Riley Costello. I'm enjoying Take Your uh, Daughter to Work Day. Scott Harris joined alongside Erica Hunter for the coverage of this game from the Basketball Hall of Fame. Well, actually, <laughs> Basketball Hall of Fame, we can tell that story. <laughs> 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 because I asked, I asked Erica to come join me day one just to look at things through the prelims, get a feel for the whole uh, arena in the atmosphere. And I get this call because she couldn't find me. I said, baby, it's the Hoop Hall Classic, but we have it at Springfield. She called me from the actual Hall of Fame about six miles down by the river. I can't believe you're telling this story right now. It was it's pretty so embarrassing. Funny. It, it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because she's familiar with both arenas, so I can understand what kind of sent her down that road. But at some point, I figured the bell would have gone off. How are you going to fit all those people in that little Hall of Fame? <laughs> <laughs> when she got there and she got easy access parking and everything else, she's like, this isn't making any sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was really impressed with my parking. <laughs> No security at the gate. Nikki, no, check that. That is not, that is Riley Costello. Got my 23 and my 32 reversed. Rachel Billiveau, Momentum I believe, is, getting uh, called. Shifting a little bit if Westside can keep it going. They're scoring some points right now. All right, so the deal is Rachel Billiveau might have been arguing the call against Riley Costello. For a second there, she was kind of eyeballing the ref. But the foul was not called on her. Double substitutions for Central, Alea Sweeney and Shariah Haynes, 23 and 33 respectively. Another three at the line, Tamara Gervais. And I'm sorry, oh my, and the foul. You know, that was an odd play, huh? Yeah, that was a nice job by uh, Michaela Thompson. She had, she had a steal there and put it up, and now she gets to shoot a couple free throws. Sorry, is this one and one, actually? So what am I looking at here? 11-point lead for Central, but just to think that if Springfield was able to get down and convert that and close it back to within a single-digit difference, yeah, you were just talking about how the momentum seems to be going uh, Terrier's way, and that would have been an extra boost. Yeah, and I was also talking a little bit about the advantage Westside had uh, with the foul situation. Oh, thank you. But, That's but right. now they're they're in foul trouble. They have more fouls now than Central does. And when you made that comment, Central had just gone into the one and one, and Westside had only four fouls. Right. Now it's eight team fouls, and Central hasn't fouled since they got seven. Twenty seconds on the shot clock and not a pretty scrum. Seemed like a lot of central players fighting each other before Rachel Billabo comes up with the loose ball. And now we are within nine points and maybe a good time for the West Springfield coach to call a timeout. We have Paul Taylor on the timeout right now. He took the opportunity to greet me early on as the teams were coming into the stands. I do uh, appreciate the support that I get from the West Springfield contingent. Look forward to finding the post operatives from this game online. 
Rudy Spano checking in at the scorer's table for the Lady Terriers. They have cut this to a single digit game. Tori Weathers coming up to the scorer's table checking in. High five in her. Her, her schoolmates, I would say, that are sitting there keeping the scorecard on the head table. Something could be said for this. Taking a timeout to keep up the momentum, not because you're in trouble, but you want to be able to continue the drive they're on. West Springfield looking good right now. Scott Harrison, Erica Hunter, president and uh, chairperson of the Nikki Longy fan club. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Michaela Thompson throws up that same shot. I don't Ooh. think it's by accident. You know, sometimes it must fall, but it doesn't look textbook. Oh, Springfield just had a good opportunity, but unfortunately, Tori Weathers lost it there. Central has the ball. 65-56, nine-point difference. From way outside, Woo! nothing but net, Shariah Haynes. That was a beautiful shot. It really was. And in the event that it touched Blash, you wouldn't have been mad at her, right? <laughs> I would have been. <laughs> Katie Lipscomb at the line for the Lady Terriers. She's shooting one and one. First one's good. 68-57, 541 in regulation. I'm looking for these big girls inside to be boxing out. Two Looks for like two. Central did a pretty good job with that. For Lipscomb. Kickball, kind of. Nice by Tori Weathers to break up that play, leaving Central with 25 seconds left on the shot clock. Ten points the difference in this game. I'm telling you, this game is not over. Five minutes and 36 seconds left. This game is not over. Three-point attempt, in and out. Lipscomb driving hard. Kicks it out to Bellavo behind the three-point line. Lipscomb feeds down low to Spano. Blocked away, no foul is called. That'll be charged to Aishana Brown. I'm a little surprised by that call. Was, Tell me why. That was a close one. You know, it, it kind of looked like she had the block there. Rudy Spano on the line. Oops, pardon me. Almost got tangled in my, in my mic cord. I'm back. Spano with another. Free throws, again, we talked about it early, and now we're seeing where they're paying off, and they are as important as ever. 68-66. Hustle by Katie Lipscomb. Good hustle. When I was I talking, mean, talking a little bit earlier about the pace and how I would want Central to slow it down. I think they're really missing an opportunity here. Uh, I think if they slowed down the ball a little bit, they, they would have kept that lead. Good jump ball right there, Nikki Longy. Central will keep this one. And you are right about that. If anything right now, giving like the short shots, you know, wasting 10 seconds off of a shot clock, that's playing into West Springfield's hands. Uh-oh, not Ooh. good. Over aggressive on the box. That's going to be three shots. Tori. Yep, Tori Weathers. I just wanted to hear from the PA announcer. Because, you know, it's amazing. Again, it was the look on Rachel Bellavo's face. She is just really feeling it for her whole team with every call. Straight in, nothing but net. Shariah Haynes, one down, two to go. 
Look at that, 69-60 every time Westside gets close enough. Substitution, finesse young Baldwin back in the game, and I believe she has four fouls. Number three on the floor for West Springfield, Katie Lipscomb. She has four personals on her. Nikki Longy has three personals on her. And let me see if I can confirm. Yes, four personal fouls on young Baldwin. Four on two right now. And the two players that were first on defense each have four personal fouls. Mm. No, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Rachel Bellavo only has two. 24 seconds left to shoot for West Side. The difference is 10. Oh, high arcing three. The bounce back off the glass almost drops for the Terriers. He lips going pretty upset right now, but she, she did shuffle her feet there, and that's why they called that foul on her. Good observation. She's fouled out. Ooh. Tamara Gervais, after this little five or 10 second change up to sub and a new player will go to the line, shooting one. So this isn't like when you were much younger and take your daughter to work day was just having you drive around when I did radio station business for Clear Channel and Kicks Country. Um, I guess getting you involved in the game, is this too much for take your daughter to work day? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I really appreciate this experience. It's, it's uh, out of my comfort zone a little bit, but I'm having fun with it. Well, you know, at the end of the day, if I could make you as good a broadcaster as I made you <laughs> an excellent basketball player, I'd say it's a win-win. We should yeah. revisit this. Yeah, you're going to have to put a lot more effort in, though. I, uh, <laughs> I have quite some crazy memories from my childhood and playing basketball with you. Uh, I remember one time... You woke me up at probably 2 or 3 in the morning after you got back from an event and wanted to play ball. And you told me you were going to flip my mattress <laughs> unless I got up <laughs> and played with you. <laughs> well, you know, it was a hot summer night. And, uh, I mean, the court had lights. So I wasn't yeah. making you come out there and have to put, like, a beacon on your forehead to see. You know, you had every, I, I had the water bottles all set up. I mean, it wasn't like when I had you in those circumstances. I didn't make sure you had a towel. <laughs> you had a water bottle, and everything was all set. You did. Mm, mm, mm. And oh those were great God. experiences. <laughs> no one else in the world will ever have to do that, probably. <laughs> oh, my God, I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, thank you very much. And to think when her and I sat down, meaning Erica and myself tonight, and talked about some of the things that we might discuss. Um, please, what's that $10 word you use? Can you what? Not embellish. Can you be col col not anecdotal? Co anecdotal. Thank you very much. All right, there's a three-point basket for Westside. Uh, no more anecdotal. Back to the here and now. 73-65. The difference is eight. Four minutes and 12 seconds left. Westside did a really great job at the beginning of this half uh, with their defense. They had, they had some good touches on the ball, and they're going to have to pick that up again because right now they're just fouling, and they got to stay out of foul trouble at this point in the game. Hey, so if we can go back to anecdotal for a hot second. Yes. Who's calling who now that while you don't threaten to flip my mattress, you want to play ball pretty bad with me? Who, who's making that call now? <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> You know, social media being a, a, big, a big place from where it was back in your younger day. Uh, and the cell phone's not all over the place either. But now I get blown up on Facebook and I get the text messages and it's just like, I want to play, I want to play. And, you know, I have to tell you, I as much appreciate that as you have grown and matured that you're still willing to, you know, reach back and, and, and that I'm the choice that, <laughs> that you want to be able to hang out with. So thank you. You know, sometimes your kids get grown, they get gone. You got to pay someone to kidnap them and bring them home. I don't have to do that with you. Nope. 
<laughs> I'm gonna flip your mattress. Oh my God. All right, here we go. Fast up ball. What's the whistle? Traveling. See, now that, I, again, I question how when you're running full stream, does the ball get out of her hands? Maybe she takes too many steps before she gets off another dribble. You know, we're going to have to watch back the tape, compare it to the whistle. Um, those of you, when you eventually, actually right now, you have picked this up on cable access, considering that this game, while recorded live, um, will be, you know, taped live and, and aired later. But you'll get a chance to pause this on YouTube and go back and see exactly what it is that the ref sees. Count the basket for young Baldwin. Three minutes and 24 seconds. It's a five-point game. Would you have thought that this would have turned out to be a five-point game you know, honest, with the final three minutes? Honestly, I didn't think it was going to turn out this way. Even when you were talking about that statistic about the uh, Long Meadow game. And it looks like Central's finally starting to slow it down a little bit. All right, who are they going to call? 32. Nikki Long. Like I said, you know, West Side, if, if they want any chance, they're going to have to stop fouling right now. Both teams are at the limit. Six point difference, but Central's on the line now. And they can, oh, one shot, so they can bring it back up to seven. Okay, no, she is shooting too. Got you. All right, so she can bump it up to eight. And we talk about this again and again, but it's coming down to these free throws. Nice basket. Second chance opportunity right there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, KK so close. Having recently covered West Springfield against Long Meadow, these girls' names pretty much roll off of my lips because I've seen them play. This is my first look at Central High School this season, so I have to kind of, you know, refer to the scorer sheet. Uh, if there's one thing I will never need a stat card for after tonight is Nikki Long. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if I'm in West Springfield at the Big Y and I see her in the checkout line, I'll know. <laughs> so when you talk about knowing these girls and having some history with West Springfield, as we take a look at what's happening right now in their huddle, KK Barba, she appears here in the official program. And uh, I mean, I just, upon seeing KK Barba when I'm watching her at home, they've got her name in the book, Michaela Barba. Again, because I have covered the team, I'll call her KK. I can only imagine sometimes, you know what girls are like where if they prefer their nickname over their real name, but the announcer doesn't have that history. So every time they hear their real name, they're like, oh, I wish he knew to call me KK. <laughs> I got your back, KK. Now let's just find out as we come back. Who's watching over who? Who are the Angels going to support in the final two and a half minutes? Six point difference in the game. Central leading 75 69. Oh, baby. Three seconds left on that shot clock. Somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. Got some ups. <laughs> Sharon Robinson. Now that's what we were talking about when they had that inbound ball with two seconds left in the first half. And I was saying, how do you think they might draw it up? Mm -hmm. That was nicely drawn up. Mm -hmm. No time off the clock on that inbound in basket. So if you need a two second drill inbounding under your own basket, that's money. Cross-court pass. Oh, yes, look at that. Who gets the ball off the jump? Good recovery right there. Trying to get out of the double defense, Rachel Beliveau. And she gets it up to KK. 
Oh, yeah, that's a good push foul. That's a good call right there. KK Barber, she's going to the line. Chance to bring her team back to within six if she can drop two. Karina Miranda's first personal. Yeah, see, the public address announcer's calling her Michaela, so right about now, I've got to be her hero. <laughs> Although I like the name Michaela, make no mistake. But I'm sure we call her KK in short for a reason. KK Barber hits the first, seven point game, 138 left. Michaela Thompson is checked back in for Central, number 24. And there's where the height advantage comes in because Wes Springfield just got, got the ball off of that uh, missed foul shot. Yeah, that's right, young Baldwin going to the line. Finesse, young Baldwin, chance to make it a five point game. And as you mentioned, the foul trouble pressure now increasing for Central. Chance to make it a five point game, Erica. Mm, mm, mm. 33 in for Central, Shariah Haynes, and she'll replace Sharon Robinson, who just made that nice, I guess, alley oop by girls' standards, right? Yeah. Finesse, one for two, six point game, time out, west side. Let's take a look inside that time out. So again, having been there and done that, do you want to give me a sense of what might be going on inside this huddle? 127 left in the game. Can't quite get a sense of what's happening on the timeout meter as far as to what's left, but I don't think it matters. What's Coach telling his girls now, E? Um, you know, I'm wondering right now if West Springfield is going to be forced to start fouling Central because the time is running out right now, and uh, it is still a six-point game. But we'll see once we get out there what, they, what they're going to do. Well, Westside does have outside shooters, and they've been swinging the ball well. They've been getting the looks to be able to hit those threes. So as far as being able to get those opportunities, Westside has shown that they can swing the ball, and the defense that is Central's, no, they've been giving Westside some good open looks. Six-point game, minute and a half to go. Whoever wins or loses this one, both teams can be very proud of themselves. West Springfield is going to put some serious pressure on Central right now. And Central is going to use their dribbling skills. KK Barba. Try to get out of that. Little touch foul. And as I was saying, it looks like West Springfield is going to start fouling them as soon as they can. Aishana Brown at the line. It looks like uh, Central's taken their people off the line, so they won't be even trying to go for the rebound. They're just going for defense right now. First one's good. Finesse Young Baldwin back in, and that's going to be something right there as well. Every time there's going to be players, you're going to see some interchanges right now on the West Springfield side because he's got some players in foul trouble, and who's not to say that this game, even if it goes to overtime, you don't get extra personal fouls if you go to the fifth period. The lead is eight for the Lady Golden Eagles. Finesse Baldwin kicks it out to Nikki Longy. She's trying to get the defense off of her. Spano, the long three, hits the rim. No foul, no foul. Football, and it's back in the hands with a fresh shot clock. Ooh, Ooh bad pass. Too much arc on that pass. Just a little bit. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't say bad pass, but just a little too much air time allowing other people to get it. Kind of turned what should have been a direct pass into a free ball or a 50-50 ball. Off the glass, Rudy Spano. 43.5 seconds and a six point difference, 79-73. All right, let's turn the table. I like this, Erica, you make the call. So what's the coach telling Central with a lead and 43 ticks left on the clock? I imagine they're gonna wanna get it to one specific person. Um, I imagine their best free throw shooter because uh, West Springfield's gonna foul immediately. 
So whoever's, whoever has that ball in their hands is going to get fouled. Very good game here today to wrap up day two of five of the 2015 Spalding Hoop Hall Classic. So again, anticipating quick fouls. Central has to go the length of the court. Rudy Spano playing the distracting game, giving it everything she's got. Can't get the foul off yet. Oh, KK Barber Ooh. with the steal. Yeah. And they're not going to foul West Springfield. Yeah. Oh, no call. KK wanted a foul. That may have been the difference maker right there. If that wasn't, that was. The lead is back up to eight. Alea Sweeney with a chance to bring it up to 10. 22.4 seconds, shot clock not a factor. Central did a really great job there using their speed and their ability to dribble to get past those West Springfield players. And unfortunately, West Springfield wasn't able to foul them uh, very quickly. <laughs> 22 ticks left on the clock and a nine point lead for Central. As this one's about to wind down for the books. I really love the Central team, and we've been kind of rooting for West Springfield, uh, but you know they're the, they're the underdog at this point. Uh, but Central's really impressive, and, and they have a great ability to shoot and uh, dribble. You have seen a good one. Want to thank you for tuning in and watching it. Share it with your friends. Put the word out and watch through the rest of the season because we will continue to closely follow Western Mass boys and high schools basketball right up through the playoffs. And in most cases, I think a lot of these teams run through the cage. Um, American International College has been a host site for some of the playoff games. But we will be there right through the rest of this 2014-2015 season. Now this is where you're going to watch 13.8 seconds drag out for an eternity. But it'll give us a chance once again just to thank you all for viewing the game. For those of you that are watching it who also came out in attendance and took part all throughout this weekend. And you know, I should also note that this happens over the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Holiday Weekend. Kind of put well in place. Um, the program guides that they gave us here and I would encourage you either through hoophall.com or through the Springfield College website to go and take a look. There's a very interesting picture from 1964 when then Dr. Martin Luther King was selected to come to Springfield College for their commencement address. And it was at that time, Rachel Velvo, and it was at that time that they gave him an honorary degree from this fine institution. So part of the reason that they were able to tie this into this weekend also add some Springfield slash Martin Luther King Jr. history on this weekend. It's worth taking a look at. Final 2.3 seconds. Everyone's pretty much just relaxing. The fans are slowly making their way out to the polar vortex that awaits in their cars without auto start. That's my best shiver, sorry. <laughs> I've been calling this Take Your Daughter to Work Day. I guess it's really Put Your Daughter to Work today. <laughs> I've had fun with it, though. I right, thank you very much. I realized when I initially approached you and said, you know, I really want you to come join me. We'll have fun. Uh, she had this look of, I don't really want to. <laughs> uh, what do you want me to do? What am I going to say? But you did very well. And I thank you very much for coming out. And everyone else, once again, thank you very much for watching. This has been Media One Sports Television coverage of the 2015 Spalding Hoop Hall Classic brought on by the Basketball Hall of Fame from the campus of Springfield College. Everybody, until the next time. <laughs>